Welcome to the Guitar Shop, uh, Guitar Shop NYC. My name is Eric Coco from La Bella. We have James Carbonetti over here from Carbonetti hello. Guitars. Hello, hello. The mighty Ian Allison. Woo. And our artist relations man, galore musician bass player, Mitch. Looking Freeman. so right, dude. Look at yeah. this guy. Looking Hi. so right. Had, had to dress up Ian, right. right. <laughs> Ian's here. Had to impress. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> with the beveled cuffs. Yeah, come oh, on. Wow. Yeah, cool. I just, I just want to talk about your outfit all day. Yeah. This is awesome. I can hook you up <laughs> if you need a guy. Yeah, yeah I do yeah, need a guy. guy. <laughs> I do need Welcome a guy. to New York where everyone's got a guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. So uh, we're here today to celebrate Ian, the bass, our team, Olinto. Yeah. Um, we have this really awesome opportunity to have Ian in town and present him this Olinto oh. jazz bass. Oh, uh, look at that. Working on this project for quite some time, and it had all come together. And yeah. We are really excited about it, you know? Very. So what was the genesis of this whole meeting, would you say? Um, yeah, what was it? So I'm going to say before the NAMM show, not this past, but the year before, yep. um, we made a roasted ash, roasted maple, roasted bird's eye, natural, um, with the Tokyo tortoise yes. guard. Yes. And okay. it was going to Nam, and I'm testing all the bases before they go to Nam, and I, I like pulled Eric aside, and I was like, mm -mm. <laughs> this one can't this go away. Not going. Yeah. And he's like, it's going. And I was like, but I need it. <laughs> and he's like, no, you don't. You have enough bases. It's got to go to Nam. And I said, okay. And then I texted him numerous times and was like, I can't sleep. <laughs> like, just the thought of all these people, like, Getting thinking the, about buying it. Rubbing nits all over the base. I don't mind them playing it as long as I know it's coming back home with me. You know what I mean? But I was like, can't, I just can't let this one go. And around the same time, I don't even know if you know this, Scott Devine, separately from you, yeah. was like, what's up with that bass? The, that jazz bass? Uh huh. Oh, wow. And. And I, I got, it was still technically for sale at that moment, Yeah. but y both of you <laughs> messaging me just confirmed that like, it's, I can't let it go. And I, right. I yeah, messaged yeah. you immediately. And I was just like, I don't care. It's mine. And yeah. he was like, if you're really serious, I'll say it's sold. And I said, yes, I am. And we took it to Nam. Everyone, it. It. everyone tried to buy it couldn't it was mine yeah um so then you were like well i love that bass like tell me more about it yeah and we talked like tone and the woods and whatever and you were like i think that's kind of what i want i tried to convince you to go stack knob yeah yeah yeah. you were like don't push me <laughs> yeah don't not push my me. thing not I, said, I got it all good <laughs> and i think the rest is kind of history yeah. and i have a uh a 78 Right. Fender You're Antigua, an Antigua. bass that isn't a great bass on paper, but it's like the one that I learned how to play a jazz bass on. That's and why so, isn't it a great yeah. bass on well, paper? Well, because, right, it has all those things about late 70s it's heavy. basses. Yes, it's heavy. It has horrible chunky neck pocket neck. gaps. I like the chunky neck, oh, but okay. yes, pickups yeah, were weird. Part of the whole sound, though. Right. Yes. The and gaps so, in the pop yeah, and the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, right <laughs> yeah, yeah, loose neck pop, yeah. loose neck fit, where you could almost take it on a gig and like, if you push on the neck, it would go like, ah, oh, yeah. and you bolt, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so... My problem. <laughs> yeah, that's right, just, just pulling the neck. There was, uh, I think you were like, hey, you know, we've actually chatted about, you know, if, if you'd be down to have us build you something to try to like beat your yeah. number Big one challenge. MT Big challenge. Challenge. Yeah. Big challenge. Big challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, that's a bass that I absolutely love, right? I mean, that's a bass that is is a big, big deal to me. Yeah. It's because of the history well, I have. You know it in the house. House. Yes. Yeah. It's like it's that's, your, that's thing. your thing. Yes. Yeah. You see you, we see that alongside you right. most yeah. of the time. Yeah. And, and the Sunburst guy. 
Oh yeah, the, the beat I up think sunburst that one. All the time. Yeah, those are like your two. Yeah, for, I mean you have a lot of basses. I've seen you play a lot of basses, sure. but for me, when I think Ian Allison, I think like the beat up where it's like a 67? 68. Yeah. 68. Yeah. yeah, I think of that one, and I think and of the Antigua. Antigua. Yeah, well, and this. So I came in, and these guys. <laughs> Showed that it was up on the wall. And yeah, with the light, night, like, no, reflect, like last night, yeah. you guys were like, "Hey, take a look over there." And I yeah. couldn't even do it because we were in the middle of a conversation. Yeah, I just started, and I, I couldn't. And I was like, "I don't look yet yeah. because <laughs> because all my attention is going to be out yeah, yeah. at that moment." And then finally, the moment it, was right, yeah. and I turned, and and it's so lovely, right? Like it's so good. Thank you. In yeah. every. Regard like it beats the Antigua. It beats my '78. <laughs> like, wow. Sick. wow! In every regard, cool. I mean that bass will still always be special to me. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But this is like a better instrument by leaps and bounds. I mean, you guys know that, but it's just from an outside perspective. There's so many things, and I'm happy to talk about all those things that yes. I love about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, I first of all just wanted to say thank you. Yeah. Because it yeah, was like course. an incredible honor. To have you guys build this for me, like I do yeah. not take it lightly. It's a big deal. Like I still sometimes have to be like, is this, <laughs> like, is this real? You know, yeah. I played it last night in the hotel room too for like an hour until I was like falling asleep. Yeah, because like, uh -huh. I just want to get, I just want to <laughs> yeah, get, you know, like, have the You're DNA so of it and me yeah. meld. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. It's your take on Antigua, which I absolutely love. It's right. gold. Yeah, gold Antigua. Yeah. Exactly. Do you want to talk about yeah, Jake, stuff? Tell us yeah, about please. Yeah. the process, man, because you you were the genius behind yeah. it. I mean, I always love gold, obviously, uh, and I always love bursts, obviously. So let's put them together. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, it's always fun. Like I've always been a fan of the Fender Antiguas from the original ones from the Coronados oh, in the sixties. Yeah, yeah, yes. and they're so weird and awesome and. Um, they don't get enough love, I feel like, right. and I feel like you've been one of the big champions of it. And mm. Thank you for that. Totally. Dude, I feel like if you don't love Antigua, I don't trust you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Mm. I just like, feel like, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like who thought of like a pale, pukey <laughs> yeah, thing? Yeah, that's a thing. It's pukey, yeah. yeah. Sometimes when they it's age, like it's they get real, pukier. It, it gets pukey. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 So with this one, I wanted it to be like just a broken in yeah that white burst uh with gold and then doing the guard with a uh, clear plexi so yeah. it'll never chip or anything it paints it right. reverse you paint it, it on back. the back yeah then yeah. so you kind of have to like think about it you're like all right yeah. this the top coat for you have to paint it backwards oh yeah crazy yeah. right yeah which is right cool. and i remember you telling me that because you're like oh and and that's something that you bring to the, you bring so much but like all those details around like on Antiguas, they painted the top of the guard, mm -hmm. and then that comes off. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. Right. Which is cool. Yeah. But you're yeah. like, you know, what would be really cool is to is if to do it, it on plexi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you put it on plexi and flip it, yeah. and then it never comes off. Yeah, that's just, just like, lives. That's yeah. just yeah. A, that's a badass attention yeah. to detail thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's always just uh, you know you got to keep it weird and you got to keep <laughs> it functional and and uh, just also. Beyond that, just try and make the best instrument possible that, you know, suits the song and the, the tone. And that's why we went with the All Roasted and think it yeah. really Yeah, I mean, that's a vibe. Nice. So All Roasted Ash, yep. Roasted Maple, Neck, Roasted yeah. Bruise Eye, Ward. Yeah. yeah. And something else, too, that I noticed, and, and I still, like last night, I was playing notes hard on it trying to get it to give up yeah <laughs> and the action is so delightfully low yeah and it does not ever fret out anywhere yeah. no. there's no like wonky That's my obsession. yeah yeah but it's not common no, even it's for not like common. really great yeah yeah instruments yeah and the thing about super low setups is you can always make them higher mm -hmm. yeah but you, but you can't always go lower correct yeah right uh -huh. i would like to start at an uncomfortable super comfortable low because like at first like oh this isn't good enough this that's what you can't live with this that's what i thought you get a few days i'm like ah, i'm gonna right. have to bring it up a little. little yeah yes right because yeah. the humidity straightens yeah, it yeah. out changes and, a little bit yes yeah. but yeah. But, when i do the frets with with the fall off and all of that and like i just always try and get a lot of head room 
Yeah. Yes. It's like the master volume thing. It's Edwin. Right. And then you can break it up musically. Sure. But it's not gonna... You don't have to baby it. No. no. Because on all of my Fenders, I have to work... There are notes that I worry about. Mm -hmm. For they, sure. They occupy Especially yeah. brain space. Fenders. Yes. Yeah. That's with all of them. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. You incorporate that into your playing. You do. It becomes like, part you know, of like, playing. okay, the fifth fret on the D is like a little wonky, so I'm going to always play the G up here. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's and like, it can be cool. It's part of it. It's like, it makes it feel like it's a living thing yes. almost. But then when you play a bass that's like physically perfect yeah you're like oh what the fuck is that that's the fun thing with like having <laughs> yeah. different bases each base has it's their own thing so it makes sure. you play different yeah yeah, yeah. but Which the thing about these too. are like they're like old muscle cars like yeah they'll do whatever yeah they'll you just want. do whatever you yeah want. yeah <laughs> yeah i agree but it's familiar but it's gonna be super modern feel like playing wise yes Something too about this bass that you guys, I feel like you do on all your basses, if I'm not mistaken, is a thinner body mm -hmm. than typical, which is like Inch early and 60 yeah. spec. Yeah, is that right? We found well, a 63 yeah. for Mark Bundy, actually. Uh, Lee Nadell, and his was one of those thinner ones. Like a handful of them came out of the back of the thin. Yeah. Okay. Do we know if it was right. a mistake or were they trying something? Probably just a heavy handed batch. Back then, you know, there's a lot no, of No, I know. There's so many. Yeah. yeah. They're a little too much. You know? Yeah. And they're like, oh, these actually sound awesome. Put them out. Right. Uh, you know yeah, how they do like, We're going to lose money on it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And but it worked. Yeah. We found one of these and they're like, this is awesome. Yeah. And early on, we just kind of took that apart. So it was a real Fender thing. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. love the resonance of the thinner body. Yeah, it's oh, I to me, there's so many advantages of it. Just as a gigging guy, you, yeah, like, as a gigging guy, you get so used to it being like ergonomically in there, and you're just I like where my wrist sits too. Like that's what yeah. I was saying to you. Like going back to thicker body bases and like where my arm has to sit and how far my hand goes up. I don't know. Yeah, that little has bit this makes issue, a difference. It really throws me off now, yeah. and I'm just like, Ugh, But then what? it's also the roundness, because I'm really obsessed with making, like, wood and instruments feel soft. Mm, it's like, sure. you don't want to feel it. It's just like, it should just exist. Yes, right? yes. Also, there's a weight loss yeah. that mm. is, like, Really, I mean, all of our bases are. I mean, this yeah, is extra this light because everything's roasted. Guess how much it weighs. We weighed it. He we know. It on the dock. He guess it. We know, but you don't know. Really? Guess, guess what it is. Oh, I'm usually really good at this, but now that I'm on camera, <laughs> I'm going to fuck it up. And no, stupid. I want. I want you to guess. Um, I'm gonna say. I mean, I I like to live in a range. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All um, right. Um, this is somewhere between. Five, eight, and... Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, that, that's lighter than that? Going. No, no. Not. Okay. Oh. I don't need to interrupt you. Go, go on. on. Keep, keep going. I was going to say, like, 6.7. Is that your final answer? Yeah. It's 7.6. Which is still great. Yeah. Oh, I wanted it to be like <laughs> I mean, that's still stupid light it's for stupid a Fendery light. base. And, I mean, the best. so yeah. my Antigua weighs probably 11 pounds. Yeah. I would, I'd it's say. late 70s. Late 70s. Yeah. Um, and something that I actually like about bases that don't weigh 5 or 6 pounds is the fact that when they do, it's so headstock divey. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You feel the yeah. hardware then. Yeah. Yes. You're supporting the hardware. Yeah. yeah. Left hand. But there's a balance thing that all of these have. Yes. It never does that. And so I like, I love that this weighs. Well, first of all, 7.6 is freaking light. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever played a bass that's five point. You guys make bases that are five no. or something? We know. We we no, uh, I mean, that guy, right? With we have made crazy. Light. Yeah. We, um, with the super We've never broke body. We don't yeah. six. There, on solid body. Even that five string that was a copy essentially of this, not paint wise, but wood yeah. wise, that one was like ridiculous. I remember before hardware and everything went on, it was like in the fours. No. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Because <laughs> we were like, is this the lightest base we've ever made? And, and in the end, I wasn't even crazy about it. Like some of the Sonic. Yeah, I'm, not, I was a, like, I'm not a think huge too light, light person. Well, sometimes it's, it, I think you just run risks because, like, 
there is something it's hard to, to the really the band. heavy fender. Yeah, there's tonal things yeah. that like those heavy ash fenders are like. That was, yeah. was G's you know? thing all the time. He's like, whenever you play, he's like, whenever you play with Hall and Oates in the stadium, heavy less Paul. Huh. Always. Yeah. Because it has like it a, cuts a groove. Gravitas. Yeah, it cuts. Yeah. Maybe. But I think light faces are just hit or miss. I remember my 52 was insanely light. That thing sounded great. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it just, it, when you get, the lighter you go, there's risk. Yeah, but it depends it on where you pick up You have to, like, really dial yeah. it in at that point. Yeah. When you're dealing with something that light. I but, feel like maybe heavier bases can, like, hide issues because just of the mass. Like, well, they, like, they hit back. Thing. Yeah. Like, you hit it and then. Cuts like a water that it comes back. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. One design yeah. aspect that we were talking about last night, which I thought was really important, you, you know, James explains about the roundness of the wood and everything. It was the knot. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, if you For want to sure. expand on that, because this is something people say, right? They go like this, and then and you see light bulbs go off. Yeah. Yes. Players, so, yeah. So it, when you pick up a base, right? Yeah. You pick it up. Let me pick Here, this base please. up. Hold it. When, when you pick up a base, if it's in a rack or something, you always are picking it up here, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe here, but typically your hand goes to here. Yeah. And on almost every instrument, there is a squared off, this corner, sharp corner situation here right. on the nut, right? Where the string passes over to get to the tuners and you notice it and you wonder to yourself, this is just, this just must be the way it is. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm just gonna like, yeah. It's just gonna have to end just this. build up some extra calluses. Yep, yeah, it's on everything. Ouch! Oh, yeah. and I'm bleeding a little here. Yeah. And, and I guess That's this kind of winter gig, you're dry. Oh, you're dry. <laughs> you're dry. Now. You're dry. You get blood on your base. You're like, yeah. well, you know what? I mean, the the great suffer. Yeah, blood for their the art. Tears, baby. Yeah. And that's just what it is, I yeah. guess. And then <laughs> you do this with an Alinto, and you're like, oh my god, it doesn't have to slice your no. hand yeah. open. Yeah. That's that is. I mean, and look, it's like, it's a detail that people could do. Very easily. But so many people choose not to do it. Yeah. yeah. Because it's also difficult to, yeah, to do a really nice nut. It's it's so difficult to make that feel like this. Yeah. yeah. It's an extra time. I mean, to be honest, I never even cared about, as a bass player, like you're saying. Yeah. We get so used you to get those. Used to it. That's what it is. I never even cared. Like, the nut was such an afterthought to me. Right. Like, yeah, fret ends. Like, if it's really yes. ridiculously sharp, that's an issue. That but sucks. It yes. also didn't bother me so much. And just from hanging out here and watching, like, Jimmy do his thing, on these bases and his own instruments, yeah, I realized like, oh, like yeah, I don't want to just say like wood is wood because that's not true, but I'm just gonna say it because the frets and the nut are like so fucking important. Yeah, it has to be it dialed. Like, changed my whole like. Well, I feel like the frets and the nut are like almost like the words, and the wood is like the tone of your voice. So it's like. Hmm. You can. Oh, it, that's deep, dog. Say it. Wait, wow. say it. Say it again. I was saying, oh, like, shit. The the frets. Yes. And the nut. Yes. Are like the words because those are your notes. Yeah. So they have to be clear. Yep. And then the wood is just like the tone of your voice. Mm. Like so, you, the timber and stuff, and then also the strings and everything. You know, you can just figure things out, but you know, I like that. This is a testament to the detail that James puts in. James is the head luthier builder for Olinto. Also does incredible guitars under his own brand name, Carbonetti Guitars. Um, he puts, as the shirt says right here, he puts all the effort into the Olintos. He has full control of this and it shows. Yeah. So everything has a reason, just like we spoke about the nut and everything, the detail, everything has a function behind yes. it. Yes. As you can tell, that bass is a little, like I guess, I like to call it wavy gravy. But um, a lot of people take fillers and smash it into the ash. Smash it. We don't do that. Oh, we're, we're no. We chase tone. Yeah. We're tone masters. Why would you want to fill that? Oh, with yeah. Right. Right? Thin lacquer as possible. Thin lacquer. It's right. nitro. We use nitro. Well, we take it to the next level. Yeah. It's super, super thin. 
it ages right before your eyes. Yeah, so I even breathing. I love it's breathing. Sometimes when he does those those ash ones, that it's so thin, you're still seeing like yeah. the contour and the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's really organic. Cool. You're seeing it. Yeah, it's, it's organic. Crazy. It's a piece of wood, right? Yeah. Why cover that up? Um, we chose a really beautiful roasted flame neck for Ian. Yeah. I don't know if you could see sure that. Did. It looks like a tiger shark. It's really flaming. Okay. Yeah. And then it gets really, really flaming towards the nut on the back there. Yep. Um, we use a really nice high grade piece of bird's eye maple for the fingerboard. Yeah. Um, and there's a little detail there, which we uh, started doing quite some time ago, is we put the buffalo nickel. Yeah. And that's kind of been our lighting, yeah. uh, unspoken mascot for the relics. Yeah. This particular one we chose for Ian because it's a super rad buffalo nickel. It's not like the regular Indian head. Uh, right. The Indian head has been carved into a skeleton, a skull. Yeah. So that is very unique. Um, we made two of these bases. Oh, yeah. We we uh, we called them the twins. Mm. Um, Mitch, you mind grabbing that bad boy? Oh, yeah. Oh. So. Um, in honor of this moment, we said, why don't we build a twin? But that's, it's a little different. They're not they're identical, kind of, they're fraternal. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Fraternal, no, they're, fraternal definitely, they're definitely fraternal. So that's, the reason we did this is because we could also show the audience that, hey, look, it's a jazz bass. This one has three knobs. This one has our stack knob. Yeah, uh, yeah. The way that we engineer that those electronics. Yeah. Are. Rosewood and, board. It's got a Madagascar rosewood board. And nothing is roasted. Nothing is roasted. Yeah. A little beefier. Uh, that has a little bit more weight. I don't know. You know, what do you think this one is like? Three pounds, Oh, uh, well, now I'm going to say this. <laughs> I was going to go the opposite. I was going to go 14, 47. <laughs> Um, <laughs> nice. That's so, see, this is why I didn't want to do this on camera. One take. I knew it was going to come back to bite. Welcome to the brother. <laughs> um, um, and this guard here is completely gold and doesn't have the burst underneath it. But the which, same but plexi. The, same yeah. Plexi. Uh, oh, my hair is getting all over And, um, you know, James, you want to explain a little bit about our circuit, why it's different than the original? Well, that one that we, we have, have so it, like, blends into each other. So one of the coolest things I think that I yeah I've been stacked on a freak for for a while yeah. and it's always bugged me that nobody really went after the original stack knob mm -hmm. circuit mm -hmm. like if you pop open a 6061 you see those two like fat like wax caps and then there's those little rainbow resistors in there and it gave you this like super dark almost p bassy mm. kind of sound which i thought like that's awesome but that's not what the jazz bass like became in everyone's head sure so i think when fender like reissued it they were just like who cares about that like we're just gonna stick some little like dime in there and i was always like appalled when i opened it up <laughs> like that's what's going on in there and then when we started doing this i i was like yo let's source like original, you know, I'm like gonna get ridiculous. Mm, awesome. like, let's source original things and remake that circuit. And everyone was like, no one cares about that. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, you're right. Oh, so, no, so, and, but we I love that. that. Yeah, so yeah. then Moss was, at the time was like, let's try something. And it ended up, I guess it like almost runs in series. At least that's how he explained it to me that like even with this let's say you you want your neck pickup off mm -hmm. this tone is still running yeah, everything through, goes through everything. this tone mm -hmm. so like you're almost getting double capacitor on each pickup which gives you like way more of a darker range of sound yeah. per pickup and then when they're both on it works just like tone tone right but everything's just way more blendable yeah mm -hmm. and you, cool. you're getting like this extra range of palette for like darker tones now you're making me want to try it hey, the, this amazing I explanation told, yeah, i told you it's cool <laughs> yeah i mean it's all i love that that exists i love that you guys do that and care to that level yeah for me like w when the heat is on yeah there's three jazz bass sounds for me <laughs> yeah. it's it's two pickups on full so scoop mid-range it's jocko right and then it's like neck pickup jazz bass, which yeah. sort of feels like a 51. P yeah, it can do. And so there's, to yeah. me, in my mind, there's three settings. And and when I have stacked with the different tones and stuff, I'm like, oh my God. It like messes with me yeah. too much. And I knew, 
But even if I tried this, I would probably want to go to something yeah. that is really comfortable, like what's yeah. on my base that I have. I, you know? I don't hold it together. <laughs> it's totally just needed to justify it. Yeah. Because totally when you talk fun. about it, it sounds so great. It is cool. Yeah. And you know, eventually you'll just get another uh, one. <laughs> like that, you know? There we go. But I don't I don't fault you for doing the three knobs. Um, can I talk about something that you guys now probably just take for granted because you're awesome? <laughs> sure. Right sure. This shape. The headstock shape yeah. is so great. It's oh, cool, thanks. right? And it's hard to make a gorgeous headstock. Yeah. Headstocks are so hard to do. Um, and this one acknowledges, like, yeah, Fender. Yeah. It acknowledges it, but then does something completely different. And I like that it's big. Right. Yeah. Where and it's a big headstock. Yeah, I, I, I love like that. that. So, yeah. And that's something like you know after you believe been, there's tone there's tone yeah, there. yeah. There's the size of the tuners also makes yes it exactly. like, like, when like, you were deciding like back at the old place starting from Eric James, yeah your um, signature Moss goes well let's see your signature Eric this mm -hmm. is you know this is I'm proud to see it so I, I sign it I have a biggie and it goes like this he goes okay he takes it yeah. All right, this is what the headstock's gonna look like, your signature. Yeah, oh, it's based yeah. off of his so signature. So it goes like this and yeah. not like that, just like the headstock. Whoa! Yeah. Big belly and thin. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's where it came yeah. from. Wow. That's where it came from, yeah. Well, it's really good, and that stuff matters so much. Yeah. And, and not enough people are maybe transparent enough to talk about how much that matters. Like, I don't know, like not, not enough people say, it's yeah. It's your signature. Yeah. yeah. Your tone. Well, I so, imagine. You know, I get made fun of my headstock all the time. Bring it on. <laughs> oh, yeah. The weirder the better. The Carbonetti headstock? It's, 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 it's been, oh, man. No, it's I like, love it. In a yeah. good way, in a good way. But I'm always like, bigger headstocks are better. All of my heroes, all huge headstocks. The Angelico, all these. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Man, like, that stuff really, like, look at Paul Bigsby. Like, all he's got is, yeah. it really... It's your thing. It's the crown, you know? Yeah, I yes. think there's also a trend. I don't know. I feel like, look how many bases now have no headstock. Sure. It's, I don't know if it's a travel thing. Or, or heads are falling. Or, or yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, or just people <laughs> are trying to be fake. different. I yeah. don't know. It's just coming back to that 80s thing again. Like, enough time has passed from, like, the Steinberger thing. What do you think brought it on, though? I no. felt like it, it yeah? Yeah. You no, know, not I, originally. I mean now. Oh no, now I really? think like yeah, it's more like modern metal dudes like going back to the to the head headless thing. Interesting. So I swear, I imagined it's because of like all the har the horror stories on the airline travel. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's more aesthetic than it is practical. I think like it was a thing. It was cool in the eighties. Then it was yeah. not cool for so long, and then it, like fashion, right? Everything enough to have around, around, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and people start going, "Oh Music. man, those Steinbergers yeah. were dope for sure." And then, like, whereas in the nineties or in the early two thousands, yeah, it was yeah. Not, no, it was not cool. and you know, this guy made all the strings for them. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's his fault. Yeah, <laughs> nice. He sat there going, "These are gonna come back." <laughs> <laughs> man, the story goes, my my dad tells me all the time because look, Ned Steinberg, Steinberg went all around the country looking for someone to help him with this design, and yeah. he goes, "Everyone's turning me away." They said, "This is really? trash." And my wow. dad says, "Well, they were in Newburgh at the time. They had just moved from Long Island City." And he's like. I'll get your spot for just down, just down the street. I'll help you and I'll develop the strings because it's a headless system. True headless system, double ball. Right. right, right, right. A lot of these headless are not. That's no. right. Yeah, these yeah. things come and they clamp your strings and yeah. if they don't have Bust the correct them. screw. It's like this. They're splitting yeah, strings. It's weird. It's like, what was the builder thinking? They're not flat screwed, whatever. But they're not true double ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. We still use the original jigs from the early '80s that we made for Ned in our factory. Cool. So if you want cool. the original double ball. Those are in Lavellas. Cool. You know? And uh, yeah, he started making the carbon fiber instruments two blocks away from where our factory still is today. Yeah. Hey, wow. speaking of strings, mm. we talk about the strings? Yeah, sure. That you made for this base? Yeah. yeah. So we didn't make it beautiful. for this base, well, but you. We kind of did. No, we did for sure. Yeah. We just finished, like, we just decided that's it. You're the second person to basically play an afternoon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because, because we, we weren't a huge flat guy. Because I didn't right. want flats on it. And that's what we said. We were like, should oh. we just like stick it to Ian and go, here are your flats, like enjoy. <laughs> and then we are like, no, we know he's going to want rounds. Yeah. And then I was I was just like, we got we to gotta give him the new so strings. There's no way he's not going to like them. Yeah, yeah we've been right. uh, playing around with what we invented, we call it super polish. 
And the super polish is what we consider the evolution of what a quarter round or half wound, right? Which those strings basically you take a round wound stainless steel string yep. and you run it through a grinder and that grinder shaves off the stainless the edges of the of the little coils, right? Well, what that leaves is a slightly, I'm gonna say not say abrasive, but a little rougher finish. Yes. Okay. So um, after like wrestling with this for the past 20 years, people tell me it's too much, it's too little. I said, right. screw all of this, and I'm not taking this feedback anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna evolve this to the next level. So in my factory, we have developed these uh, big polishers, right? So these polishers basically mimic a human hand and fingers running the uh, running up and down the string, polishing the uh, string, right? So these polishers basically have big carriages running back and forth. Uh, and what we do is we mount the round wand strings onto there and we start polishing the heck out of it, right? We use a thicker grit sandpaper, then we go to a lighter grit to get that really high-end polish. So what you get is this buttery feel. It rubs away all those ridges off the round and leaves you this super high-polished string where your fingers can glide up and down. Yeah, which What's, for steel so is This is the feel, the right? And yeah. you got the feel done. What's the sound do? Well, now you've invented something that's straight down the middle. Mm. It's not a flat, it's not a round, it's still a little crunchy, but it's smooth and it gives you some nice low end. Yeah. That's still retains. Like the best of both worlds. Best I think it leans yeah. sonically, I mean, correct me if you think this is not true. I feel like it leans more towards the round wound yes. sonically. It does. But then there is like something closer to a flat. You can flesh it into a flat. Yeah, I yeah, maybe Rather that's than maybe playing that's what it is. super round into a flat. Like yeah. you can Tonally make those more into flat wounds than a normal stainless steel. Yeah, yeah. that's I guess like that's it takes what it off is. that top. Yeah, there's a the, the very zingy thing yeah. kind of goes away. Really but you can it. definitely do everything a round wound should do with these, yeah. but they feel so much smoother. And, and as far as I know, there's nothing like this. And no. dude, no. I am I'm a big string nerd. I've been checking out all the different string marketing gimmicky stuff for ages <laughs> yeah. blue steels dude cryogenically frozen right Cry right I mean, remember? Yeah. Yeah. all those things and i've been like ooh, i wonder if i wonder if i wonder if and then you spend a lot of time with that and you're like oh all strings are kind of the same that's right i'm like oh all strings are kind of there's no real innovation but this to me yeah feels yeah. like a crazy innovation yeah we're am i wrong no, no, like you're absolutely right it, we're so anti-gimmick yeah, yeah. Like, yes. yeah we've always said oh man look at the bullshit they're coming out of now. <laughs> yeah and it is bullshit because it has no lifespan mm. it goes oh like the emperor's new clothes and then farts out yeah right you know this is a true evolution of things that we've been doing for a hundred years like you know with bass strings yeah yeah you know? So these strings right now, they're not part of the catalog, mm, you know, right. we like, we, just, we, bake, we made them for you, yeah. you know, these are the Olinto, they work off the Olinto construction in the sense that they have the same cores. Yeah. And, uh, you know. And same gauge. And same gauge. Yeah, seven to one. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the magic, that's, that's, that's the magic yeah. number. So they're, they're made there. bigger. Beefy. Their yeah. maids are probably they're beefy, 49 to 109. Yeah, yeah. And then ground down, right? So it's. Yep. So right, you start you're still getting even a bigger. You have to your meat. Yeah, you know you're going to take that meat down. Yeah, interesting. You're going to yes. take the diameter down. Mm -hmm. um, so light cores, big gauges give you a very articulate but nice flexible feeling string yeah. that doesn't like flop out. And you didn't put them in a the freezer and cryogenically no. You didn't do any of that. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> bring, you know the, the lovely New York grid on that. And, right. Uh, We're running through puddles in the yeah, street. Yeah, yeah. We just run down the street. With them, you know. But, uh, yeah. So this was like an opportunity to bring all of this together for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll probably have these out in a limited edition series pretty soon. Probably through our website, lavella.com. Roadie Club. At the Roadie Club. Um, and at so. our shop. At our shop, yep. always. Yeah. So, yeah, again, we're here, located here in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Uh, this is our guitar shop, and this is like our home. This is oh, where we house. build these instruments. This is where James builds his instruments. This yeah. is where we all sit down and hash out like crazy ideas. Yeah, this is where we come up with uh, this all these ideas. This is the laboratory. This yeah. is the build site. This our is, um, yeah, yeah, today we're having this amazing clinic with Ian. Yeah. It's a home base for those type of things, too. Uh, we are the community shop. We welcome everyone with open arms, encourage everyone to sit down, hang out, try our instruments, ask us questions, buy some strings. Yeah, get weird. Know, get weird. Yeah. Uh, repair setups, thriving repair setup business. 
some uh, some the <laughs> yeah. tea yeah. machine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So th this is us. You know, this is where we create everything. Yeah. We're happy you're here. Oh, I'm oh, so yeah. happy to be here. It's like Thank a dream. You so much for being yeah, here. it's it's a dream. It's great. Uh, yeah, and I it's crazy. Like I just when I'm not playing this bass, I just want to be playing this bass. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you well, that's, yeah. that's what I know with that. every build is like to make, and it probably sounds cheesy, but like to make everybody who orders an instrument have it be like their old friend, like mm -hmm. something that they're you know familiar with, right? And it's still new and fresh and. And that's the fun part of building instruments like this, of like, it's super modern where it needs to be, like a dual acting truss rod, a great fret job, all of these things, perfect tuners, bridge. Yeah. Yeah. But then everything else is back to the 60s and how it was done. Yeah. Or early. I, I mean, I feel like as a bass player who loves vintage stuff. Yeah, both of us, we're all vintage. Yeah, like, that's part of the thing is like, you know, if you're gonna buy, I mean, at least to me, if you're gonna buy like a 62 P bass, I don't want the 62 that was kept in the closet and no one touched for a thousand years. Right, well, one that's been vibrated wanted, a lot. Yeah, I yeah. want the one that like, ha I mean, I had a rule forever that I would not buy a vintage bass if it didn't have the burn here, oh, yeah. from someone's cigarette being right. in there all the time right right because i was like that bass has been played well, at least yeah. neckwear or something yeah <laughs> well I, yeah just because well yeah. if there's if there's a cigarette burn no, no. there's <laughs> there's neck yeah wear, you know yeah I mean? that same but it's like that thing of i want the bass that's been played at the bar every mm -hmm. night for 60 years yeah and i feel like these instruments despite being new that attention to detail in the frets and the nut and Jimmy's relic work and all those things. It, and how to do the fingerboard. Yeah, it's yes. like the closest feeling thing in my experience as a new instrument to that, mm. which and that's, is what drew me That's in. where we're lucky too, because me and you are both super vintage guys. Like, Yeah, we know I what the up, shit should feel like. I grew up and in and like. player and touring musicians and I grew up in vintage shops holding yeah. real instruments and then owning them and touring with them and owning 60s SGs and Gibsons and feeling what happens to them after 50 years and after 20 fret jobs, right? You know, that's how I want our next to feel like it's good. It's like you've taken your 60 P bass or jazz bass, done a fret job on it, redone everything on the inside to make it like perfect but then here's the it's like redoing an engine in a, a muscle car yep you're not like taking out the soul of it but you're just like helping it just like live forever yeah yes but then you get one of these and then it's just that next level of truly yeah and and it'll just break in and and it's like here's the start take it from here i know i can't wait yeah. i can't wait to like and like, especially with the thin lacquer, like Mitch's bold bass looks crazy. Oh, ridiculous. Right yeah. <laughs> like your suit melted into the back. Yeah. Like it was so thin. I was wearing a black suit all the time then. Yeah. And like in no time, I realized like there's gold on my jacket. <laughs> and I look at the back of the bass and the back is like blackish gold. Cool. And now it's faded to this like interesting greenish gold oh, thing. There's cool. so much dirt on it <laughs> that I refuse to clean yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. It's so funky. It's changed all kinds of crazy colors. It looks ridiculous. Oh, I love that. And yeah, yeah. mixing all my own pigments too. So it's like bronze powder and all that like original. Oh, oh yeah, old stuff that yeah. like it's organic and it it changes over time. But yeah. it's not like we're not dipping these things in poly. Right. No. Right. Right. You know. Yeah. yeah complete opposite like after a tour it's gonna look different yes oh for sure great like, you know it, it it becomes yours yep. yeah right after that clinic it's gonna look different exactly definitely <laughs> exactly definitely cool but yeah that's the fun yeah. stuff welcome to the family yeah. yeah wow thanks you guys yeah thank you so much yeah yeah, yeah. of course well yeah let's cool. let's get a party in for this clinic yeah, tonight so audience thank you for joining us uh until next time yeah yeah thank you guys <laughs>